Hi, this is Malesh. Today we are going to discuss about the topic nutrition food supply system. Before getting into this topic, let us recollect what we have studied in our previous classes. You see, my dear children, if we classify all the things which are present on this earth, it can be classified mainly into two types. The first one is abiotic components abiotic components and the second one is biotic components biotic components so what are these abiotic components in simple language we can say that abiotic components are non-living things non-living things that means what children? The things which do not have life in them are called as non-living things. So what are the examples to these non-living things? So non-living things examples is soil, air, water, sunlight, temperature, etc. So these are the good examples to the non-living things. But whereas biotic components mean simply we can say that it is a living things. They are living things. Living things means which have life in them. Non-living things mean which do not have life in them. So what are included in these living things? So plants and animals are included in this what children? Biotic components. Right. So the interaction between these two biotic components as well as abiotic components. So we call it as we call it as ecosystem. So what is ecosystem? The interaction between abiotic components and biotic components. So is called as what? Ecosystem. And the study of this ecosystem is called as ecology. The study of this ecosystem is called as ecology. Now the point is on what basis we have classified into abiotic components as well as biotic components. So based upon the life. So how can we say that the, uh, the so and so thing is having a life. So the main thing is children we cannot exactly define what is a life but we know we have already studied in class 9 that the basic structure and functional unit of the life is what children cell right it is a cell the cell is a structural and a basic structural and functional unit of the life if you observe this cell children you know very well i am taking a very simple uh, what children cell cell with a cell membrane and inside we call it as what children cytoplasm and this one is cell membrane inside the cytoplasm that means that inside the cytoplasm that means it is a fluid like part children cytoplasm it is a liquid part of the cell and inside the cell there will be a solid part children that is called as a nucleus right so this cytoplasm is made up of what children molecules as you know very well that these molecules are the smallest particles right the movement of these molecules in the cell is a necessary for the existence of the life the movement of this molecule is it visible to us no it is not visible to us so this invisible movement of molecules in the living cell is responsible is responsible for the existence of the life children okay so now let us see some of the characteristics of the living organisms right so characteristics of the living organisms so already you might have studied this in your primary classes children but even though it is very important to know about the characteristics of the living things the first thing the main characteristic of the living thing is growth living things grow 
Growth is the main characteristic of the living organism. Growth is seen in all the organisms. But growth is not similar in all the organisms, children. Because in some of the organisms, growth is uh, uh, what rapid. In some of the organisms, growth is very slow. In some of the organisms, growth is throughout its life. In some organism, growth is at, a, at uh, up to the certain period of time. Say that in plants or in trees, children, the growth is throughout its life. But whereas in the human beings, the growth is very, very uh, to the limited extent. Isn't it, children? To the certain period of time, so the body grows. Right? So here, this is the growth, children. And the next second characteristic of the living organism is, children, movement. Movement. So all the living organism, all the living organisms will move. For what? For the sake of food. For what? For what for the they take food? For their survival. So all the living organisms will move by itself. For the sake of what children? Food. But here also you see all the organisms move but they do not have the same locomotory organs children. Different living or uh, different organisms have a different types of locomotory organs. Say that if you take into uh, if you take an example of euglena, in euglena uh, locomotory organ is flagella. If you take an amoeba, we have a false feet, we call it as a pseudopodium. And in paramecium, a hair-like structures which are uh, surrounded uh, all over the body, so we call it as a cilia. Isn't it children? So, and even in the earthworm, it is an invertebrate, so earthworm moves with the help of setae. And in snakes, with the help of scales. And human beings, with the help of legs, children. So, here the movement is seen in all the organisms. But the thing is, they do not have the same locomotory organs, children. Right? And next, uh, the third point we will see, children. All the living uh, uh, things, they eat. They drink. Isn't it? But whereas non-living things do not eat anything, they do not drink, but only living organisms only, they can, what children, take food, they can drink water. Why do they take this uh, uh, water, food and water in order to survive children? So in order to survive, they take, uh, they eat and drink, uh, drink children. Okay, this is also one of the characteristic of the living organism. And next, uh, fourth one we will take. So what is the fourth characteristic of the living things? The first one is a growth and second one is a movement. And third one is what children? They can eat and drink. And uh, fourth one is children. <coughs> fourth one is they respire. Respire. What is meant by respiration? Taking, breathing, taking in of air. That is called as what children? Breathing. So, all the organisms will breathe, will take about children air, will take oxygen, okay, for their survival. But whereas non-living things, that is abiotic components, do not require any oxygen, children. Oxygen is in the uh, part of what abiotic component only, right, children. So, here also if you observe children, respiration is very common in all the organisms, but respiratory organs are what children different for example you see uh, what children in a primitive organisms you can see that uh, by the process of diffusion through the cell wall so the uh, oxygen enters into the what children body okay and uh, in some of the organisms like cockroach tracheal type of respiration, a tube respiration is seen with the help of tubes. So these organisms will uh, what take air. And in some of the organisms, gills, for example, like fishes. Fishes, uh, in fishes, respiratory organs are gills. And in human beings, lungs. So all these are the different uh, types of uh, uh, what children, uh, respiratory organs. But their function is what children? Same. Their function is what? Just to, to take the oxygen. 
and uh, that oxygen it is used to release the energy right and next uh, fifth point let us see the one, one more important characteristic of uh, this living things and fifth one is excretion 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 means what elimination of waste materials from the body is called as excretion so all the living organisms excrete their wastes so how these wastes are formed so we have seen in the uh, what above example so all the living organisms eat and drink and to get their energy so respiration process is very important because it will oxidize the digested food materials and it releases the energy along with that energy children so there are certain waste products will be produced and that waste products it must eliminate from our body if they are not eliminating from our body so certainly our body gets what children toxicated so animal cannot exist uh, exist if the toxic materials are present inside the body children so certainly what happens children it has to be eliminated isn't it so different organisms have or possess different excretory organs children right see in the invertebrates children see uh, flame cells are seen in some of the organisms where excretion is carried out by the flame cells you will learn about these all things in the uh, next classes okay and uh, in in for example like malfeasion tubules so these malfeasion tubules are seen in cockroach right so are seen in cockroach and this is these are useful for uh, what excretion right children and in earthworm nephridia so these are the excretory organ and in uh, human being skin as well as what children kidneys are responsible for the uh, what excretion process uh, right so see the excretory organs are different but excretion is common in all the living organisms right children and one more thing children in the one of the main characteristic uh, of the living organisms is children they respond to the stimuli what uh, they respond to the stimulus so this is the one topmost uh, uh, what children characteristic see uh, non living things do not respond at all so this is what children uh, uh, marker so this cannot respond according to the environment but living organisms always respond to its environment children if they are not responding then it cannot survive so adaptation to the surroundings it is what children called respond uh, it will respond to the stimulus which is one of the characteristic of what what children living organism so so respond to stimuli right children right and one of the another one of the characteristic is what children reproduction reproduction so reproduction means what giving birth to the young ones right children giving birth to the young ones see here reproduction process uh, uh, is seen in only living organisms children but where has in non living things that is abiotic components we cannot see that so reproduction is the characteristic of what children living organisms some of the organisms here children they lay eggs and some of the organisms lay only uh, eggs children and that too uh, some will lay in few in number and some will lay large in number children and some of the organisms give directly birth to their what young ones but here reproduction process is what children seen it is common in all the living organism so because of this reproduction process so we are able to uh, what children perpetuation of our what children race got the point so etc not only these children these are the very important uh, characteristics of the living organisms got the point and uh, you see my dear children so these all process are seen in the living organisms these are the basic what children life processes right so these are the basic life processes children so the basic life uh, uh, what processes which are carried out by an organism for their life it is called as life processes right children so see the definition children life 
processes what is this what are these life processes life processes mean the basic the most essential activities or the processes which are performed by a living organism for their what children survival or for their life is called as what life processes children got the point so what are the life processes children can you give an example to that so life processes are nutrition here comes our topic children nutrition respiration respiration right and uh, here excretion transportation coordination reproduction okay so etc so these all are called as what children life processes so all these life processes require some energy including nutrition also got the point so all the organisms require what children what do they require they require energy so how do they get energy because of what children nutrition process okay so what is nutrition what is nutrition i will write it here uh, i will write it here so what is what do you mean by nutrition what do you mean by nutrition you might have studied in your previous uh, classes also but i'll give you a simple uh, what definition procurement of nutrients procurement of nutrients is called as what nutrition got the point children what is mean by procurement procurement means what intake intake of nutrients got the point so here what are nutrients nutrients are carbohydrates right carbohydrates proteins lipids we call it as fats vitamins and minerals and one more important thing children water water is also comes under what children i am writing in a chemical i'm writing chemical formula water that is that also comes under nutrients children so what are nutrients carbohydrates proteins fat uh, lipids vitamins minerals and what children water so they are called as what nutrients right so these all nutrients are the chemical substances children where these chemical substances uh, are required by the body for what for what for what these all nutrients are useful they are useful for growth and also to repair the what children cells have you got the point and these carbo these all nutrients from where do we get we get it from what children food we get it all these nutrients from what children food got got it so here nutrition is nothing but what children procurement of nutrients procurement mean intake of what children nutrients so nutrients are the chemical substances which 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 are seen or which are which we get we get it from the food it contains what children carbohydrates proteins lipids vitamins as well as minerals children so animals how do they get what children from where do we from where do we get food so we get food from plants uh, directly from plants as well as uh, and from animals also children okay so this is about what children a uh, nutrition so here one thing we have to understand so there are a different ways children where the different organisms procure the nutrients so we call that has modes of nutrition right so modes of nutrition we will uh, study in the next class children okay i hope you have enjoyed this class very much if you really enjoy please do subscribe to my channel that's all for today thank you thank you very much